Grace and peace. God bless you. Welcome to the Love Church Virtual. Welcome to our February series on finances. February, um, finances in February or financial February. I was going to name it for the love of money, but I didn't want to throw people off and um, give out the impression that we're going to talk about <clears throat> loving money because we know that that indeed is a sin. The love of money is the root of all evil, but money in and of itself is not. As a matter of fact, the Bible says that money answereth all things. So I want you to dig your heels in. I want you to make sure you have your Bibles, have your um, notebooks, paper and pen, or whatever your writing instrument is. And I want you to replay this message and the supplemental messages that will be coming behind it as many times as you need to. I want you to share it with your family and friends, because in 2021, we're going to experience a monumental shift in our finances. And I'm not, listen, I'm not one of those prophets that's telling you to sow a seed, name it, claim it, run around three times, high five, high five your neighbor. No, I'm going to give you some practical tips. I'm going to give you some wisdom, some wisdom, God's wisdom, godly wisdom, and some biblical insights and kingdom principles. We're going to wrap all of that together for you so that you can learn how to, first of all, identify the ability to get well for the Lord has empowered us to get well. So I want you, first of all, to be able to embrace the fact that God wants you to prosper. That's the word of God. God wants you to prosper. He wants you to be in health even as your soul prosper. So there should be a balance, an even playing field in terms of how you are approaching and managing your finances. Um, so God wants us to prosper. Not only that, he has empowered us to prosper. And so these are all kingdom principles. And so I'm gonna outline some things for you in the next few weeks um, that I feel is going to be a blessing for you. Many of these principles are that which I employ personally. And I'm not telling you that I'm a millionaire, but God is doing some great things, amen. And we lack for nothing. So, you know, I, I wanna share these um, nuggets with you. And we're also gonna prophetically flow in however God wants to speak to his people. Because listen, just because we have topics and themes and so forth, God is still God and he can override the program whenever he wants to. And so we're always open to the Holy Spirit, to him revealing and releasing what he wants his people to know. So Father, we bless and thank you and glorify you for this moment. God, even though we're virtually uh, worshiping and learning, Father, we thank you that you are God of all things. We thank you for the resources, for the technology, for the support, God, that you have made available for us to continue to minister and bless and fellowship as a people. So Father, we just ask for a fresh anointing, a fresh teaching grace, uh, insight and the wisdom on how Lord God, a prophetic flow uh, and an, an apostolic fresh oil, Lord God, that we can release the sound um, wisdom and biblical insights so your people can be blessed, God. We love you and we honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, welcome to the Love Church Virtual to all of our online members, which everybody's online right now, right? Um, even my staff, we're um, home. So I'm ministering to you from home uh, because of some inc inclement weather. Nevertheless, we're going to do what the Lord has required us to do. So welcome again. God bless you. And um, I, listen, pray with us that there are no technological glitches or anything like that, because we know the devil is a liar. We rebuke him right now. Open up in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 26, and I'm going to begin at verse 17. Now, there are many um, topics <coughs> that I could have started this series out with. For some reason, God led me here. And I'll be honest with you, this wasn't really how I wanted to start it. I, I wanted to go into some other things, but the Holy Spirit kept bringing me back. Because trust me, I was, trying to, I was trying to run off into some other areas of scripture. I was like, oh, I want to show them this and I want to show them that. But the Holy Spirit was like, no, <clears throat> I need you to begin here. And so the topic for this week, we're talking about financial, um, February financial series. But our um, first week's topic is unearthing generational wealth unearthing generational wealth. And so that's coming out of Genesis chapter 26. And I'm going to begin at verse 17. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm not going to, you know, uh, uh, you know, attack your intelligence uh, because we can all read. Um, <clears throat> but what you see happening here is uh, this was after Abraham's departure. And this was during a time that Abraham had a lapse, excuse me, Isaac had a lapse in faith. Okay. And this was he in for those of you that like to study generational things, remember when Abraham lied to uh, Abimelech and said that Sarah wasn't his wife and come to find out she was. And so Isaac sort of follows that generational um, lapse 
in judgment or lapse in faith. And remember, we talked about faith in time of January. And so Isaac is sort of following in Abraham's shoes. And I really want you to catch this because I really need you to understand the importance of generational, first of all, generational things that was in our bloodline, we are predisposed to it, good or bad. And so we need to acknowledge some of these patterns and, and some of these cycles that we're seeing. If they're good, wonderful, keep it going. But if they're not so good, then you have an obligation to confront it and to make whatever changes necessary so that it stops at you. But we find here that the same lapse in judgment that Abraham experienced, <clears throat> we find that Isaac experiences it as, as well. Not gonna capitalize on Isaac's failure, life happens, right? But what I, I just kind of wanted to bring you in, and so the Bible says in, verse, in Genesis 26 verse um, 12, that Isaac sowed in that land and he re, um uh, he sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. So there was a famine in the land. And I, I want you to follow me closely when I say this, that many times when we experience famine, whatever your famine looks like, I was being reduced on the job. We're in a pandemic. Um, you know, just life circumstances ha that happens that affects our finances. That's a famine, a financial famine. And so, but in that, Isaac still had the faith. Remember, he inherited that faith from his father. And so I, I, what I believe the Holy Spirit wanted, why I believe the Holy Spirit wanted me to begin with this series, especially coming on the heels of faith, is that now our faith has to influence those who follow us. Our faith must influence those who follow us. Now, I'm not saying they have to do what we say verbatim. I'm not saying we're expecting them to be like us. But what I am saying is that your faith should be so strong that it, it it influences those who are coming up under you, who, uh, who you have influence over. And so there was a faith that Isaac inherited from Abraham, that even though Isaac was in the midst of a famine, there was a famine in the land, Isaac yet sowed. And Isaac sowed in a hard place. And that's where a lot of us, we, we're talking about financial principles and things like that. Fear will set in when there's a famine. Fear will set in. Famine and fear are married. The minute you feel like, oh, I don't have enough, what do you immediately begin to do? Shut down and lock down, right? You begin to hoard. Well, that's precisely what the enemy wants you to do. Because once you shut down, lock down, and hoard, that's when you tie God's hands to release to you. That's the kingdom principle. Um, it, it, you, you have to understand how God works. You have to understand that God is not limited to a pandemic or a famine or I was being cut on the job. He's still God right? God doesn't change who he is because it's raining outside or because you're having a bad day. He's still God. He said, my word is forever settled. And so many times what happens when we're in a famine is we lock down, we shut down, don't turn the lights off, don't use the TV, don't, you know, uh, don't, don't, don't use the ball of gas. So immediately we operate in fear, okay? And so we know that fear takes sides against God and you cannot operate in fear and faith. And the Bible says, whatever is not of faith is of sin. So when we operate in, in fear, we're operating in sin because what fear does is fear says, I have to do this on my own because God is in, God is, is inadequate to do this for me or, or God can't do this for me. Th that's the mentality that fear will give you. God can't do this. God won't do this. God is, is, is not concerned about this area of my life. So I have to do this. And so you take the, the power and the omnipotence of God from him and you mantled upon yourself and you know we are all inadequate to prepare and uh, to provide for ourselves. So, but what Isaac did because he inherited this faith from his father, Abraham, the father of faith, the Bible said in the midst of a famine, when everybody else was holding back and holding back and you gotta catch this y'all, this is so powerful, so powerful. And I know, let me just put, let me just throw this in here. I know that many people have abused the sewing um, principle I've seen it abused. I've been abused by it. So I totally get it. But what I'm saying is just because you eat a bad meal doesn't mean you stop eating. Many of us have eaten things and it didn't agree with you. If you're lactose intolerant, like some people I know, and they continue to eat ice cream and drink milk and eat cereal, and then their stomach fights them later on. <laughs> so in other words, just because something doesn't work in that particular season or under those circumstances doesn't mean you throw the baby out with the wash. What you do is you learn and you, you study it for yourself and you look at how it really works. Then you apply it the right way and then God will honor that and it will work the way that it's intended to work. So I know that that, that whole principle seed sowing, I, I know everybody in their cousin has, has been affected by it. 
to a greater or lesser degree. But what I'm saying is don't let the enemy use that to rob you of the richness. And I mean that in all aspects to rob you from the blessings that come from that. Because Isaac understood that. Abraham understood that. Abraham gave or tithe free law. Many people say tithing is under the law. Tithing is not mandated under the law. Tithing is pre-law. Abraham gave to Melchizedek. Melchizedek was Jesus Christ in, um, pre, pre-incarnated, a theophany, okay? So Moses, yeah, he Moses adopted the principle that Abraham set before them, but tithing is pre-law. We'll talk about tithing a little bit later on because many people have that twisted too. Um, so Isaac, so even though he was in a hard place, even though his circumstances said, you better hold on to what you got because this is a rough time. But by faith, he commanded his seed into a hard place. He, he, he commanded his hard seed into a hard place. Let me just say that because it was a hard thing to do that. But he believed by faith that God was going to respond to that seed. Let me tell you what God did. And this is, again, the mentality that you all have to get. You got, there's a, a poverty, hardship, lack, mentality that many of the people of God who are Holy Ghost filled, speaking in tongues, fire baptized, and only with heaven, that they, they still have a mentality poverty. And, and don't say, well, you know, um, poor people, you, you, uh, what's the cliche that you, you often hear? Well, let me just tell it to you like this. Remember Lazarus, the Bible said Lazarus was a poor man. He was a beggar and he was begging for the crumbs from the rich man's table and Lazarus died in his poverty. So let me just say that you can be a believer Tongue talking, spirit filled, dreams, visions, the whole nine yards. You can prophesy people under benches and pews, and you can still die in poverty and lack and hardship. If you don't understand kingdom principles, if you don't know how to apply them, then the area of finances, finances in your life will be a defeated area in your life. But you'll love God, and all your gifts will work. <laughs> all your gifts will work, and your prophecy will work for everybody else. But until you learn how to engage that area for yourself, it won't work for you. You don't have the faith in that area. You can't get past, <coughs> and pray my strength, I'm continuing to overcome. But you can't get past how it's always been. Well, my mama never did this. My daddy ne never did this. I never seen that. And we're going to hit this in a minute, this generational thing. Um, and so Lazarus, this the, the beggar who was a child of faith, to you know, he believed in God. God loved him. He was a covenant child. But he died in his poverty. So I, I, it, I don't want that to be your story. I don't want you to grow up in poverty, grow up in hardship, live in hardship and pass that same hardship spirit and mentality to your generations, whether it's your children or your spiritual children or those you mentor or whatever. You need to break that, okay? Um, Isaac was on to something big and this was a great challenge for him as it is for many of us from time to time is what do I do with this seed? Isaiah, I believe he talked about how um, God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. You must know the difference between seed and bread. All right, and I'm gonna talk about that for a little bit. I'm most likely gonna cover that later on in this month, but you've gotta know the difference between what you eat and what you sow. And what many of us do is we eat, <laughs> we, we eat what we're supposed to sow and we eat the bread and the seed. And that's a problem because if you eat your seed, then what do you have to live off of for tomorrow, for next year, for the next season, for your next generation? Because you ate everything. And when I say eat everything, I mean you spend everything. When God blesses you with finances, increase, whatever God is doing in your life, you must have the wisdom of God. That's why the Bible says, seek me early. You should find me. Seek the Lord. Don't wait till your money comes because you've already planned and plotted and shopped and put stuff in shopping carts. You know what I'm saying? Waiting for that check to hit your account. You've already made a decision about what you're going to do before you've got the money. So what you do when you know money is coming or by faith, you believe God is blessing you. Father, I thank you for the financial wisdom to, to make the right decision with this. I thank you, Father, that I know which bills to pay. I know what I can put on hold. I know what, which arrangements I can make. I know what I can spend. I can use to buy things for the house or for the children or for myself. I thank you for the wisdom. I receive that even now. And so that when that deposit, that whatever it hits your account, then you've already mounted yourself with the wisdom. Money is a spirit. Money will tell you what to do with it. Money will hit your account and tell you, I need to go to Duke Energy. I need to go to uh, Carolina's Panthers. I need to go to Carolina Pineville Mall or what have you. Money will tell you what to do. You have to control it. It is a beast. That's why the Lord says you can't serve God and mammon. That, we'll talk about that a little bit later on, okay? So it comes with the discipline. 
um, people of God. And I move quick. That's why some of you may have to go back and we're going to rebroadcast this again, 7 p.m. And it's going to be on our faith YouTube page and our Facebook page. You need to listen to it. You need to get this in your spirit every day until you can control this area of your life and walk in the victory from it. There's no need for you to be speaking in tongues and prophesying and, and you can't control what's in your bank account. That's unbalanced. The Bible said unbalanced weight is an abomination. God likes, God wants a just delight. It has to be just, he's a just God. He's got to be balanced. So Isaac souls in that land, God honors his seed. God honors his faith and God rewards him. And what does God do? The Bible says, and the Lord blessed him. I wanted, that's really what I wanted to, <laughs> I wanted to tell y'all the difference. I wanted to talk to y'all about the difference between being blessed and provided for. There's a difference. Well, I know that God is my provider. Yes, he is. But are you blessed? There's a difference. When someone provides for you, that means they're going to see to your necessities. But when you are blessed, you don't just have enough for your necessities. You have enough to be a blessing to others. That's in Genesis 12, 3. I will bless you to be a blessing. You are blessed when your necessities are provided for and you are able to take care of somebody else. That's a blessing. That's the overflow. And so you don't want to get it twisted between God is my provider. Yes, he's my provider. And there are many instances in the word of God where God provided. As a matter of fact, when Israel was wandering through the wilderness, what did God do? He provided. He gave them manna. Guess what? It was for that day only. They didn't have uh, refrigerators and freezers and microwaves and pantries full of manna. As a matter of fact, when they, he wanted, when they wanted quail, God gave quail and it was only sufficient for that day. So I want you to understand the difference between the blessing and the provision. Now you're blessed to be provided for, but don't confuse the bless, don't confuse provision with blessing. It's not the same. Blessings come from seed sowing. Tithing keeps the windows open so God can provide. I will pour you out a blessing. That's tithing. That we'll talk about that. Let them know y'all like, come on, let's get into it. No, not right now. All right, because there's so much to talk about. And you guys, when you walk away from this um February series on finances, I'm telling you, I'm expecting you to be giants in, in the marketplace. I'm expecting you to be giants in the workplace. I'm expecting your bank account to triple. Whatever that amount is right now, I want to see it. I mean, I don't want to, don't show me this stuff. But I, 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 by faith, I want to believe that you're going to triple what's in your account. And you can do it. You can do all things to Christ strengthen you. But your mind, that's why Jesus came as an apostle. It's important for people, it's important for me to get people to understand. Jesus came preaching the kingdom. He didn't come preaching religion. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I went through this. I did a mini teaching with my church a couple of days ago, helping them to understand, you know, how some of that works. The mentality, it is all about the mind. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Marry your mind to Christ because the way you think has to change. The way you approach things, the way you view things, it has to change if you want to become a kingdom citizen and be prepared for the world with no end. It takes a total different mentality. And that's what Jesus came to teach and to preach. And religious people hated him. My God, that's where a lot of my warfare comes from. But nevertheless, um, the Bible said, and the Lord blessed him. Why? Because Isaac stepped out on faith and he sowed in the famine. God gave him his a hundredfold, not 30, 60, not 30, 60. He had a full heart in it and he received a full heart of return. And he waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. God blessed him. God didn't just bless him with a hundredfold harvest. You have to understand that there were degrees of blessings. You hadn't even, oh man, listen, when you get to that point, and that's what God said, you, I will bless you to be a blessing. There are degrees to blessing. Oh, I'm blessing, highly favored. I'm like, you don't even know what that means. <laughs> you don't even know what that means. But there are degrees and levels and realms to blessings. And, and, and you, you guys are going to, you're going to experience it. Just, just hang on. Just get it. Just get it. All right. And so the man waxed great. Number one, he was his first blessing was a hundredfold blessing. But it took an act of faith. It took for Isaac to say, I'm in a hard place. This is a hard thing. I don't know how this is going to work. I can't even see nothing coming out of this ground. It doesn't even look like it's conducive for nothing to grow. I mean, you know what I'm saying? But I'm still going to believe God and I'm going to put the seed in the ground and I'm going to come. I'm going to demand an increase. My faith is going to demand an increase like the one with Isha Blood. Her faith demanded a breakthrough. 
She grabbed it. She wasn't waiting for Jesus to turn around and pray for her or prophesy to her. She took it. Remember, I said, well, I hope it was you guys. But the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take my fall. There are some people that are violent. They have been suffering for so long and they're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And when they hear a truth, praise God, they will run on top of your head to get to, to, get to that place and break through. Nowadays, we're so passive. We do altar call and people sit around and wonder, should I go or whatever? Praise God. Keep sitting, keep deliberating. Okay? <laughs> keep on deliberating. But when you know you need something from God, listen, before the preacher's done preaching, I'm on the altar. I got my own bucket, my own towel. I'm leave, Just leave me alone. It's, I just, it's me and Jesus. I know what I need. Okay? Violent. They didn't need help. Nowadays, I need somebody to help me. I need, honey, praise God. Uh, you, you guys want to have to grow up. You want grown up blessings. You want to have to do some grown up things. I'm just saying, and I love you too, but I know that was rough for some of you. Moving right along. The, so the Lord blessed him with a hundredfold, blessed him. All right. He waxed great. He went forward. I love that. He went forward. That's progress, promotion, movement. Because lack, hardship, and, and, and poverty will hold you hostage. You'll be in the same spot. For 10 years, everybody is running past you to folks walking past you, you know what I'm saying? And you just stuck. You're not growing. You're not, you're not, you're not doing nothing for the lack of a better term. He went forward. He grew, right? Growth, spiritual growth, physical growth, intellectual growth, societal growth, um, uh, um, uh, what's the other one? Economic growth. He grew until he became very great. Listen, then verse 14 talks about. And I'm going to get to the generational thing in a minute, but I, I want to lay this foundation for you. I want to lay this foundation be, for you so that you understand, first of all, what you have to do. Because the word of God is already settled. God said, if you do this, this is what I'm going to do. That's it. Well, Lord, I just need a word. God has already given you his word. The, the, it, it's, it, it's already here. Now the responsibility lies upon you to do the work to get the work done. And so Isaac does it, does it. It's a hard place. He does it. Boom, breakthrough. You talking about breakthrough? This ain't a breakthrough that people just prophesy. I see a breakthrough when you're like, oh, no, 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 no. This kind of breakthrough right here is it will make you lose your mind kind of breakthrough. Like, whoa, God, this is too much. I'm overwhelmed. Your glory. I can't take it. Somebody give me usher. Never mind, man down. <laughs> I mean, you're just like, I can't take it. No, it's just, it's too, I think who David said, this kind of knowledge, was it David? He said, um, somebody said, this kind of knowledge is too wonderful for me. I can't even attain unto it. I cannot understand this right here. And I, can I be honest with you? I, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> I've seen God do things in my life and I'm like, God, I'm seeing God do some things right now. And I'm like, God, I have never seen you do this before. Oh, I feel the presence. Oh, God, glory to me. Shake it out of those stuff. I'm like, God, I've never seen you do that before. I'm, I'm like, wow. Wow, God. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, praise God. Verse 14, we're still not in um, Genesis 26. And so Isaac had possession of flocks, herds, a great soul servants, and the fit. Listen, here we go, y'all. Here comes the warfare. Now, can we talk? Because what we want to do is we want to walk in all the blessings. Praise God. Still got the glory. We want to walk in all the, the blessings and, and we don't want to deal with the warfare. Uh, you, you know, and this is a lesson I, I've, I've literally had to eat this loaf this week right here, y'all. For real, like for real, for real. Um, you have to understand that when God is doing certain things in your life as a result of you moving in faith and moving in obedience, I'm not talking about something you mess up. Oh, this is happening because I messed up. No. Remember I talked about faith in God to bring you out? Things, warfares, and battles and things that come your way because you are doing what God said to you. Let's look at what happens. God has blessed this man. We're talking about unearthing generational wealth. When I say unearthing, I'm not talking about going to find it. I'm talking about unearthing what's inside of you what has been passed down to you. Now, some may say, and I'm going to stop here for a minute before I get into the meat of it, believe it or not. Um, some may say, well, you know, woman of God, um, I, we, we don't have <coughs> a generational um, wealth in our family. We've always come from, you know, low income, low status. Nobody really graduated high school, much less college. And, and so that may be somebody's story. Others of you, you may have always had somebody with money or own businesses or what have you. And praise God for that. But there are so many, especially my race of people who have pretty much come, you know, through, excuse me, pulling ourselves up by the bootstrap. You know what I'm saying? And, and so it's hard when you come up hard. It's hard sometimes to, to 
discover that within you are treasures unlocked. Isaiah talks about this a lot. He talks about treasures, God unlocking treasures, what have you. I believe by faith, and uh, you, there's nothing you can say that's going to convince me otherwise. And this screen is going in and out, and you know, just bear with me, praise the Lord. Um, but you cannot convince me, regardless of what your background is, regardless of whatever your family, social, economical status is, you cannot convince me that God has not empowered you to get well. And you cannot convince me that God has not put seeds of industry inside of you. Now, being around the wrong people will continue to bury that seed. Listening to voices of discouragement <coughs> will bury that seed. Not being exposed to teachings like this will bury that seed. And yeah, you'll be like Lazarus, laid up in Abraham's bosom. You know, he made it. The Bible said the rich man, rich man cried out to Lazarus and said, well, he cried out to Abraham because that's a spiritual thing as far as people die. And that's another whole topic. But he could not speak to directly to Lazarus, but he spoke to Abraham because when Lazarus died, the Bible said the angels carried Lazarus away and placed him in Abraham's bosom. Abraham's bosom represents a place of rest. Now, this is before Christ made, made a, a place open, okay? Before he made a place for us. And so during that time, it was called Abraham's bosom or a place of rest or paradise, if you want to call it like that. And so Lazarus is resting in Abraham's bosom. And so here you have the rich man howling from hell, right? There's a gulf fix, so one can't cross over to the other, but he's talking. He's a, all right, that's a whole, that's different. We'll talk about that later. I know some of you are like, hmm? Yeah, so there's a conversation between the rich man in hell and Abraham. Mind you, it was not a conversation between the rich man and Lazarus. And those of you that can catch it, will catch it. If you don't, don't worry about it right now, okay? It's not that important. Just stay safe, praise God. And so Abraham gives this rich man the response. He can't come to you. You can't go. We're not going to warn nobody. I'm not going to warn nobody. They had, he, you wouldn't listen on earth. What makes you think somebody's going to listen from the dead, right? And, and so, and I said all that just to kind of give you guys some content. But what I'm saying is you can be saved. You can love God and you can still die poor. You know, you can do that if you want. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> you can have whatever you say. But what I'm saying to you is if you have children or nieces and nephews or cousins or whoever, church members or spiritual sons and daughters who are looking up to you, you know, why not show them the way to prosperity? Doesn't mean that you want to venture. God had many rich. Come on, look at the kings. Men, Abraham, these brothers, you see how rich uh, uh, Isaac was? Jacob and all these boys were bad. It wasn't folks trying to figure out how to live from paycheck to paycheck. You can love God and be wealthy. But your mind, you've got to be disciplined in your mind. Otherwise, you'll turn from God and worship your stuff. And that's why, that's why some people never cross into different levels of finances and levels of wealth because, because God knows you'll bow down and worship it. You will. You'll bow down and worship it and, and you'll be more faithful to it than you, than you are to the God who blessed you with it. I will move past that. All right. So, um, so let me finish this thought. So some of you may say, well, you know, I don't really come from a family with a lot of wealth, but I, I, I maintain to tell you, God has empowered you to get wealth. And I believe, especially if you and my people, African-American people, you know, I refuse to believe that when, when we were transported across the Atlantic, that, you know, we were all coming over with a slavery mentality. We come from generations of kings, queens, dynasties, uh, you know, great skill set. And, and hardship, remember what I said, hardship can bury that. You can be, and I, I went through this in my life, and I, I don't mean to take too much time on this, but I, I want to share something with you that some of you need to know. Um, I went through a season in my life where um, I was very industrious. You know, this is many, many years ago. Very industrious. I mean, could, I mean, you know, quick, fast, on it, can get it. And then I ended up going through a season of great and intense pain. Now, listen to me. When I went through that season of pain, it shut down my ability to produce wealth for my family. And I ended up on welfare. I ended up using foods. And I'm not knocking anybody who does it because if that's what you, if that's where you are, if you're in that lean season, that's where you are. But I'm telling you, you don't have to stay there. But I just want to give you my testimony. Because sometimes you look at people and you kind of wonder like, how they do this or how they do that? Or am I the only one? No, baby, you're not the only one. I went through a season of my life where, you know, money in the bank, I'm shopping, traveling, doing what I want to drive a new car. I, you know, I was living that life. OK. And I went through a season of hardship and great pain. I went through so much pain 
to where in order to preserve my mind, that my brain work is, those of you that understand mental health, that's why I'm such a strong mental health and a behavioral health advocate, because your mind has a way to save you and it will block, you hear block and repress memory, your mind will block down, will block certain things, <coughs> excuse me, when you've been traumatized, just so that you can continue to function. Now that doesn't happen. Some people aren't, don't operate in that. Some people need chemicals and pills or whatever to do that. And I'm, I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about telling you about my experience. And I'm telling you that what I went through was so painful and was so devastating that in order to preserve my mentality, my sanity, so that I could continue to function, even though I was kind of dysfunctioning, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's what I was dysfunctioning, but I was functioning. Catch that in spirit. But my brain locked that memory. And, the, and listen, and in the locking down of my memory, during that time of pain, it also locked down my skill set. Boy, Jesus, that just set somebody free. I, I just heard somebody scream out, oh my God, that's me. I wonder why I used to do this. I couldn't do that. I, I feel I feel a deliverance anointing. Remember I told you guys, we got this series, but when the Holy Ghost want to talk, he's going to talk. I feel a deliverance anointing. Some of you have wondered, Lord, I used to do this. I used to do that. And all of a sudden, it's like I can't remember how to do it no more. Honey, it's because you went through that trauma. And in order to preserve your mind, it locked certain things down. And in that locking down, it locked your skills and things down with it. Right? It locked your skill set. It was never meant to hold you like that forever. It was only meant to hold you, hold that until you gain the strength and, and, and the skill set to, to, to uh, <clears throat> confront it and to be healed from it, okay? And, and let me give you a little bit of Bible for that. Back in Joshua, I can't remember exactly which chapter it was, but they were fighting against, I believe it was a, like a confederacy of five kings it was. And they had the kings on one end battling and they had the people. And so Joshua ordered for the kings to be shut up and locked up in a rock. It was the mouth of a rock. I cannot remember the name of the um, rock, but he said, lock them in the mouth of the rock. And so we call that, in deliverance, we call that a lockbox to where they lock those demons, those strong men down, and they're going to deal with everything else because the battle was too great. And so he said, okay, what we'll do, we'll shut down or we'll bind the strong man. Y'all, some of y'all, even John, we'll bind up the strong man and then we'll go deal with the with the, the footmen, destroy them, and then we'll come back and deal with these enemies. What for the presence of God, y'all? And so that's what can happen. And that's what happened to me. And so in that, <laughs> excuse me and it can happen over generations of families to where like i said some of our ancestors and we're talking about commemorating black history month and 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 I'm, let me tell you the refrigerator and the peanuts that's wonderful but honey we haven't even tapped into some of the greatness that lies within our ancestral history that's just what we were able to gather and salvage <laughs> you know what i'm saying a lot of that stuff has been destroyed anyway um, and, and so you don't know what came over bankers, lawyers, you don't know what came over the Atlantic that, that was buried and suppressed under slavery and servitude and hardship and being cursed and being raped. You don't, that trauma will shut those things down, people of God. And so I'm coming into talking about undigging wells and unearthing generational wealth because there is wealth in your family. You may have to listen. You may not have the closeness of family where you can say, well, I know mama, big grandma, big grandmama. Ronnie used to do so and so and so, and Uncle Jojo used to do that, and Grandma. You may not have that kind of family history, but <clears throat> I encourage you to go to God in prayer and say, God, show me the wealth in my family line and give me the strength that I'm getting into this sign of verse 17, like Isaac, to undig it, to discover it, to pull it out. To, to un Because listen, you know, we are more than just working nine to five. I'm not against nine to five. I love my job. Don't get me wrong. Now, I, I am a, a, a multiple times entrepreneur, all right? And I even help people start businesses, but I'm not leaving my job. The devil is it's a liar. I don't even, there's no coming with that word. I'm not leaving my job. I love my job. I love what I do because it is also an expression of the gifts and things that God has put inside. It is, it is an expression of the counselor. It is an expression of the teacher. It is an expression of the prophet in the workplace. So don't curse your job. Well, I'm going into business. I'm tired of my job. No, God gave you a work. God gave you a work. We talked about that in Adam, right? Anyway. So during that time of my life, I locked down and I'm trying to keep track of time because y'all know I can go and, you know, just hold on. Let me check my time, y'all. All right. Okay. <laughs> Try to wrap this up a little bit. Um, just have so much to share with you. Um, so went through this period of trauma and it locked down the pain. 
because I was not in position to deal with it at that time. Um, but in locking that down, it also locked down my gifts and talents. And so guess what, you guys? I ended up taking jobs beneath me. I ended up, um, I, I, I lost like the ability, certain things people, people would call me or, you know, reach out to me and say, hey, can you do this? And I would say, I, I, I think I can, but I'm not sure. It was like, I lost the confidence. And they're looking at me like, yeah, you can do that. And because they, they, re, they knew, you know, they, they had experienced that level of industry from me. I'm trying to find the right words to say, I'm stumbling, I'm sorry. But they were used to that type of industry from me, but because of my trauma, my trauma locked it down. And it wasn't until, um, man, 2005, my apostle, I will never forget it. We were visiting and supporting him in New Jersey. And he did a, a, um, a message. I'll never forget the message. And when at the end of the altar, at the end of this message, he called me up to the altar and he laid hands on me and he released the gag order. This stuff is serious, you guys. This, this, let me tell you something. Yes, demons are involved in locking down your finances along with lack of discipline, fear, and lack of faith, okay? So, you know, it's a matter of going to God and seeking him as to, Lord, what is the problem? What is it? And so for that, it was me being in the right place around the right people who could hear God, who wasn't looking for a $20 seed. Somebody I was in covenant with who cared for my soul and said, you know what? The Lord has shown me there's a gag order. And they released that word. And man, let me tell you something. That beautiful red thick carpet in that church, I thought, up. I probably need to send them a seed. <laughs> Say, did y'all ever get that carpet clean? I wore it out. You talking about carpet ministry? Listen. And from that point, I was able to get up and function. I mean, I wouldn't, I didn't go full force. It still took some time because I had to, I had to, the fragments had to be restored. Did y'all catch that? He restores my soul. Okay. So, and, and I mean, this is kind of a parenthetical, parenthetical thing here because I'm getting ready to get into Isaac and I'm going to get on out the way because I don't want to de um, delay your time too much. But I need you to understand that trauma can do that. Trauma can have you saying, I hate my job. I hate, my, hate so, so, so. You won't apply for certain positions. You won't apply for promotions, what have you, because your trauma is telling you that you can't do it. Nobody in your family has done it before. You need to, <laughs> you need to go to God and get that stuff, get delivered from it, get it broken off of your life. Amen. So here you have Isaac with all, all of these blessings on his life. And he's, I mean, he's operating in an overflow. You're talking about an overflow. His brother had an overflow. Like you can't even, you can't even imagine, right? And, but the Bible said he had enemies. And this is what you have to be on guard for. Don't just get caught up in, oh, I'm blessed. I got a house. I got a car. I got a promotion. I got my degree. I finally finished school. Thank you, Jesus. Oh my God. Don't get so caught up in that to where you're not watching. The Bible says, watch and pray. Because there will be enemies who will fight you. There will be enemies who will try to remind you of your, of, uh, or, or convince you of your unworthiness. You don't deserve to have it. Who you think you are? Nobody in our family ever had that before. We ain't never, how we, honey, don't, let me say, don't you bow to that devil. Greater is he that is in me that is in the world. It is God manifesting the greatness in you. That's why the Bible said, the man waxed great. It was the, it, it, <laughs> The girl, the lady said, Mary, Mary says, it's the God in me. It is the God in you that refuses to be limited and refuses to be stunted and refuses to be shut down. It's the more you yield yourself to God. That's what discipline comes from. The more you yield yourself to God, the more you're going to see greatness come up out of you. The more you yield yourself to God, I'm going to say that again. The more you yield to God, the more you discipline, the more you lock down and hold yourself together, hold things down the more you're going to see greatness come up out of your life to where it's going to shock you. Like, wow, I didn't know. You mean I got land, I've got herds, I've got flocks, all of this stuff. I didn't even see it coming. I was just hoping something would come up out of the ground. I didn't know all this was coming. You don't know what's attached to your seed. You don't know what's, what's attached to your obedience, my God. You have no idea. Let's get into this, y'all. Oh, I'll finish all my thoughts. Yeah. And so Isaac departed from there and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar and dwelt there. And the Bible said Isaac dig again. All right? I'm sorry, let me back up. Let me back up to verse 15. For all the wells which the father servant had digged in the days of Abraham. So here, here we get to a point in Isaac's life where he's now revisiting. Remember the topic is unearthing um, generational wealth. It took a, a breaking in Isaac's mind when he sowed that seed 
Oh, let me just say, let me, let me, move, let me not use that term because I don't want to throw nobody. Oh my gosh, she keeps saying so. See, oh my God. Uh, let me move off that if that's offensive to you. It's the word, but some people, you can't take it. But the minute that Isaac moved in obedience or moved in faith, let me say, that's better. Y'all like that word better? I'm going to use that. The minute Isaac moved in faith, God rewarded him. God didn't just reward him. God blew the man's mind. In that, something unlocked. This, y'all, you got to get it. Because many people have attempted to gain wealth in their own mind. Well, if I do this, I get some money. If I sell this car, if I play this lottery, you know, see, now that's your, the Bible said, lean not to your own understanding. That's your own understanding. Well, if I work these three jobs, I can get ahead. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you've been working three jobs for two years and you still, you more behind now than you were back then. You, once you, there are certain acts of obedience certain acts of faith that once you tap into it, it not only unlocks the earth because earth has to respond to heaven. Y'all got to get that. It's got to be that alignment. Not only does earth respond to heaven, but you got <coughs> regions of your mind that are unlocked. You've got to catch that because some of us, depending on if you've come out of single parent households or drug uh, uh, um, affected households, sexual situations, witchcraft families, religious families. I'm telling you, I'm telling alcohol, I mean, y'all name it. I'm just not picking those out, but I'm just saying, when you come out of oppressive, thank you, Holy Spirit, you come from oppressive backgrounds. It don't, it doesn't just oppress your spirit. It oppresses your mind. You gotta feel the anointing. Jesus, this is wrong. It oppresses your mind to where you can't think. You can put your keys. There's been times, I promise to God, and I'm not the only one, so don't pick at me. But there have been times when I would have my glasses on my face and be looking for my glasses. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you got so much going on in your mind, you can't, you, you, you just, it's like you, you, your, your mind is scattered, right? I heard the Lord tell me the other night, he said, daughter, he said, I'm going to make you to lie down in green pastures. I said, "Woo, Jesus, thank you. Because I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I don't know how to lay down. I don't even know what the green pastures are, right? It, that's a spiritual realm. That's a spiritual realm. I'm not going down to the beach. I need to find, excuse me, can y'all show me where the green pastures are? No, that's some, probably some dog dung or something on there, ants and bugs, the devil's a lot. But <clears throat> don't, that's a spiritual place. Green pastures. And the Lord spoke to me. He says, oh, I'm going to make you to lie down in green pastures. I said, oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I don't, I don't even know what that's going to look like. It doesn't matter. But the fact that he's going to he's going to let me lay down, you know what I'm saying? And rest. And in a rest in a place of green pastures, a place where you've been fed and tended to. I need it in my life. And I'm tired of fighting, praise God. Nevertheless, it is what it is. And so you find here, God blesses Abraham, Isaac. I've got to wrap this up, right? And, and, and so regions of Isaac's mind is now unlocked. Regions of his mind. And his mind, the anointing that destroys the yoke, leads him back to a place his father had dug. This is where, you guys, where the rubber hits the road. You as parents, you have a responsibility. You have a responsibility to dig wells. Well, what do you mean by that, Apostle? What do you mean by that, uh, Doctor? Well, what I mean by that is you need to hide some things in the earth, spiritually speaking, so that when your children come along, they have something to dig up. Now, it can be a skill set. It can be some money. You, in other words, you need to put something to the side. Don't spend everything you have. Don't exhaust everything you have. Don't, um, don't wear out everything you have. Always have something reserved for your generation. Have something reserved. Develop some skill sets. Let your children see you changing the oil on the car. Let your daughter see you making salmon. Let, Expose them to wells. Wells, in a natural sense, is a place of water, refreshing life, right? Expose your children or whoever your people behind you, expose them to wells so that when, you're, when you've departed and you've gone on from this life, they can say, I remember my mama showed me how to do this. I remember my daddy, my bishop, my pastor, my prophet, my friend showed me this. And so when they encounter a time of hardship in their life, they can go back to that place where you hid those wells. Abraham dug those wells knowing prophetically that there was going to come a time of hardship for his son. The problem with many of our generations is, we're, listen, we don't know 
the difference between the bread we eat and the seed we sow. And so we don't have wells, we have nothing. We pass away, and I'm just gonna say, tell us what you We pass away, leave our families in debt. They gotta figure out who can get the house. I own the house, I can barely afford my rent. You know, the Bible said a righteous man lays up an inheritance for his children. That's our job. Abraham, as a man of faith, looked out not just for him, but for his seed. God said, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And so Abraham put in a plan. David did the same thing. David, you can't build a house. David said, fine, I'm going to set some things in place so that when it's time for my son to build a house, he's going to have everything he needs. You want to, to unearth generational wealth is not so much so you can live and buy your shoes and your hats and your wigs and your nails and all that stuff, but it's so that your people can have something to eat in times to come where you don't live off paycheck to paycheck. Well, what am I supposed to do? Go to God and ask God to show you what to do because everybody's situation is different. I, there's no, there's no uh, uh, you know, uh, cookie cutter answer because what may work for me, you may can't work that same principle, that same thing. So you've got to go to God and find out what your individual process is to break this, to get you out of here. Number one, he may be saying, first of all, cut up your credit card. Second of all, don't you go shopping for the next six months. You got so many clothes, it takes you five hours to get dressed. So no more clothes for you. Yeah, you know, so it may for some, it may take discipline. For others, it may take um sacrifice. You know, so it's different. What what works for one may not work for so it's not a one, you know, answer, uh one, what is it? Um, one answer, one size fits all. The principle is the same, but the way that you manifest it is different. Okay. And so let me let me talk about this because it's time to go. So Isaac goes now because his mind is unlocked. His mind is unlocked. He 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 moved in faith. God responded to him, not just the earth respond, but his own body began to respond. Abraham's body responded to faith. Sarah's body responded to faith. Y'all, faith is a powerful thing. And so his mind, Isaac's mind opens up and he remembers, man, I remember. My daddy used to do this. My mama used to do this. My grandmama used to do that. I remember. And those are keys. Those are prophetic keys, I like to say, that they left in the earth to help you unlock the next level of your life. You've got to leave some prophetic keys, you guys. You can't just go through life going off on everybody. I told them a piece of my mind, child, so, so, so. Now here you are, God forbid, dearly departed. And, and, and you, 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 you destroyed every relationship in your path. And here your children are needing help from somebody. And they're calling so-and-so. And they're like, girl, don't call, that, that, that's so-and-so child. You come on, y'all. Come on now. What did the Bible say about a good name? So again, and that that well may be a good name. That well may be repairing some relationship. You don't know who you're gonna lead need in this life. You don't know who your children are gonna need in this life. And I often say, I tell my children this all the time. God bless me with five beautiful children, and they're a whole lot. Let me tell you something. They are a whole lot because all of them are prophetic, they're industrious, and I'm telling you sometimes. <laughs> It's rough. I got I can't hardly keep up with my own kids. I'm serious. It's they, they are, and I'm not saying I'm not complaining. What I'm saying is they are an industry and a force all by themselves. Five of them. And I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> and they call me mom. And I'm like, oh Lord, God help me. So, you know, but in that, there's a discipline as a parent, as a mother, that I I have to make strategic moves in the earth to preserve what God is doing in their life. So there may be things that I want to do, maybe places I want to go, things I want to get, but I have to sit and, and figure, you know, is this something I need to do right now or is this a will? <laughs> do I need to bury that money? Do I need to bury this particular thing? Do I need to put that to the side? You understand what I'm saying? So that when they come into a place of, of, of and, and Isaac hit a place of contention, he hit a place of strife, he hit a place of jealousy, his dad already made a way for him. Let's look at this briefly. Isaac departed then, pitched his tent in Gerard because people are fighting with him. Abimelech is saying, look, you're so blessed. I don't even want you near me. Praise God. Some of y'all are going to see that. <laughs> it's happening. It's happening. God is going to bless you so much to where people are going to be irritated and annoyed by you. They're going to hate to see you coming. They'll smile, but you'll be able to see straight through it because they can't understand why God, why God doing that for her? Why God doing that for him? And, and you want to see some movements? I'm just saying. You want to see some movements and it's already outlined in scripture. So don't act brand new when it happens. People are going to conspire against you. There's going to be conversations about you. Folks are going to monitor what you're doing. Don't come to help, come to see, right? And so you're going to have to make some movements. And so Isaac departed and left that place and he went and and, and found another place. The Bible said the place is called, I oh, wasn't in place here. Um, and they went and fought 
In other words, wherever, every, every, everywhere Isaac went, the Philistines fought him. They fought him. Some people think, well, I'm getting ready to move. I'm going out of town. Honey, them demons don't mind traveling. <laughs> they got passports. They got the real ID. Honey, listen, they will follow you. You hear me? There's no distance in the realm of the spirit. You can be in a whole other town, whole other state with us. Like, didn't I just leave this kind of situation? Because it's spiritual. You can't, we can't go. <laughs> you got to fight. Okay. And so um, Isaac, verse 18, digged again the wells, which his father had dug. And called the names, listen, after the names his father called him. He he kept his walk, his faith, and his works in alignment with what his father had done. He didn't deviate from that. When you got somebody, a person of faith, you don't deviate and do something different. You follow. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. You do exactly what you saw them do. Don't go at the same time and be inventing wheels and new things. Isaac's servants dug and found the water. The herdmen came and fought, right? They call it Esek, which means contention. So Isaac went and dug another well. And the people came and fought there. It's called Sitna, which means hatred and strife. And so Isaac moved from there and dug another one and called it Rehoboth, which means enlargement. And guess what? Nobody um, bothered him there. And the Lord made room for us. And he was fruitful. So what am I saying is I'm getting ready to close people of God. I know I covered a whole lot of ground. That's how I do. Y'all should know me by now. That's why you go, got to go back and listen to it again probably two times. Because um, there's a lot of stuff the Holy Spirit was ministering in this. But what I'm saying is, you know, even after God blesses you and establishes you, don't get it twisted. The enemy will still come for you. He will still try to fight you and attack you. And and, and you will see that the battle will intensify. And all that means is God is moving you. You've got to learn how to use the winds and waves to move you to where you need to go. Stop being frustrated. Stop saying, oh, you know, this just can't be God. This, the fight is too hard. No, this is exactly what it is. And so in each of those three places, from um, Esek to Sitna, the enemy fought, fought, fought. Isaac never gave up. He said, listen, I know that there's a place for me. I know my father made a place for me. And he went and he undug. The last place was Rehoboth, which means enlargement. And God said, yes, son, this is where I want you to be. Even though those other things belong to him too. And so God will allow you to tap into some things for a season. And I, I'm learning that in my life too. There are some things you will tap into for a season, but it doesn't mean that that's what you're supposed to be doing for the rest of your life. It, that's just to get you over the hump, as we say, to the next place. And then you'll see warfare starts, things start to rise. Okay, this ain't it either. Thank you, Lord, for this season where you provided, <clears throat> but it ain't the blessing. You got to know the difference. Know the difference between the blessing and the provision. We like to stay under the provision. Thank God for the provision, but get to the place to where you don't have to look for manna from the sky. Get to the place to where you don't have to look for quail. <clears throat> get to the place to where you own your own stuff and you can raise your own wheat and you have your own quail, quail farm. You see what I'm saying? So listen, people of God, this word has <clears throat> been the, uh, <coughs> pardon me, this word has been the first in our, um, uh -oh, look at that mess, <laughs> in our series on um, on finances in February. I forget what I titled it. <laughs> um, but nevertheless, you know, I pray that this word has challenged you. I pray that this word has inspired you and motivated you <clears throat> to press and, and to examine and to unearth and to do the work. So we talk about unearthing generational wealth. It's in you. Don't please don't give me or don't give yourself the excuse. Well, you know, nobody ever did this before. Then you are to somebody. You may say, well, woman of God, I don't have an Abraham in my family. All of my people, you know, just left with debt or, you know, whatever, sick and, the, you know, the money, uh, the sickness ate up the money, whatever. Then guess what? If you don't have an Abraham in your family to dig wells, uh, let me introduce you. You are the Abraham in your family. Start digging. You see what I'm saying? Be for somebody else what you needed somebody to be for you so that you can break that hardship, poverty, lack thing off your bloodline so that your people can prosper. Amen. So we love you and we pray that this message has been a blessing to you. Um, share with somebody, get into the scriptures and see what the Holy Spirit is saying for you so that you can tap into that place of will. God has it for you. It is not God's will for you to live uh, paycheck to paycheck. That's not God's will for you. God has wealth. He has empowered you to get wealth. God wants you to prosper. He's not mad because you have money. The only thing that provokes the Lord is when you start to uh, put, put your money in a place where he belongs. You dethrone him and you enthrone your money. Now, that's when you will have a big problem because God is jealous. And he said, my glory, I will not share with another. So we bless you and we thank God for you. Come back and join us at the next time. God bless you.